Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to finish this great chapter with you this morning. Um, let's begin our reading at verse 18, and we'll read down to the end of the chapter as always. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 18. The writer says, For you have not come to a mountain that cannot be touched, or a mountain that can be touched, into a blazing fire, into darkness and gloom and whirlwind, into the blast of a trumpet and sounds of words, which sound was such that those who heard begged that no further word be spoken to them. But they cannot bear the command. If even a beast touches the mountain, it will be stoned. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I am full of fear and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the myriads of angels, to the general assembly and church, the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the sprinkled blood, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Verse 25 says, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven. And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of the things which cannot be shaken as it created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and all. For our God, verse 29, is a consuming fire. We have not come to Mount Sinai. When Israel was at Sinai, they experienced both amazement and terror, as we can read here. It was a terrifying experience. As God came down and spoke to the people. Verse 21 tells us, so terrifying. Moses said, I am full of fear. And trembling, the people wanted no more of it. The writer differentiates here between Sinai and Zion. We've not come to Sinai, but instead Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, he describes it, the city of the living God. Verse 23, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. We have Jesus, verse 25, the mediator of a new covenant. We have the blood of Christ. We have an eternal kingdom. What's the point? Beginning in verse 25, in light of this greater covenant with Jesus as our mediator, in, in light of this being an unshaken kingdom, an eternal kingdom, one that, that won't fade away, the writer tells us, see to it that you don't refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven. He's arguing here from the lesser to greater. If the people who came to Mount Sinai didn't escape when they refused God, then what will happen if we refuse our Lord from heaven? A superior covenant, a superior sacrifice, a superior kingdom, which will be worse? You see, if the inferior law of Moses punished every sin, how will we escape if we reject Jesus? A superior covenant spoken through Christ. When our God spoke from Sinai, the Bible tells us that his voice shook the earth. In Haggai's prophecy, when the temple was rebuilt, God promised well, once more he would shake not only the earth, but heaven also. He explained in verse 27, this shaking would continue until all perishable things would be removed. Judaism would be removed. The old law, the Levitical priesthood, it was always God's plans for these things to go away. But now, God has established his kingdom, the church, which is eternal, perishable. Brethren, what a great blessing it is to have knowledge of what our Lord has done for us, to know that, that his death initiated and brought about this better covenant, his blood purchasing his church, an eternal church kingdom that can't be shaken, permanent, and we can be a part of it through the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven of our sins. To reject that seeks to substitute that, well, it comes with grave consequences. He says in verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. For those who reject this, our God is a consuming fire. When one rejects Christ, he will be condemned for all eternity. He rejects the very thing that will save him. Read verse 28 again. This is the proper response to our Lord. Verse 28, therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, it's eternal. Listen to this. Let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and all. Brethren, this is the proper response to Jesus a proper response to what's been done through Jesus, the proper response to having the ability to be forgiven of our sins, have a relationship with God, be with God for all eternity, his church one day handed over to the Father for all eternity, an unshakable kingdom. We can be a part of that, not because of us, but because of Jesus. The proper response to Jesus is gratitude. It's an acceptable service with reverence and all. Certainly acceptable service is one of obedience from a sincere heart. 
Is that how you would describe your service to God? Brethren, again, what a blessing it is. Even with all of our sin, to be forgiven and be part of God's eternal kingdom. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You must repent of your sins. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, he confessed that Jesus is the Son of God. and He was baptized for the forgiveness of his sins. Acts 2 at verse 47 tells us that those who did this on the day of Pentecost, in response to the gospel being proclaimed, they were added to God's eternal kingdom, the church. What about you? The eternal life? Accepting Jesus on his terms? Acceptable service? Gratitude? To God, or will it be eternal condemnation? God has given us that choice, but make no mistake about it. He's done everything imaginable to give us the sinner a chance to come back to him. Choose Jesus. Don't reject him. Repent of your sins. Be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Be added to his church if you haven't done that. And maybe you have done that, but your life is one that right now, it doesn't reflect gratitude. And it certainly is not acceptable service to God. It's not filled with reverence at all for God and who he is and what he's done. Make the right choice. Let's pray together this morning. Our Father in heaven, Father, for another day, we are so thankful. Father, we recognize that your mercies, your blessings, Father, are new every morning. Father, we know that you are the giver of all good things. Father, may we always have a heart of gratitude. May we always serve you out of obedience, with sincerity of heart, recognizing, Father, that you are the one true living God, the one who will judge us. Father, we want to be right with you. We want to spend eternity with you. You sent your Son. He died on the cross and makes it possible, Father. Father, we pray for those who have rejected Jesus. Father, we pray for your patience that you would give them time to, to come to a knowledge of truth. Father, may we be the vessels that help them come to that knowledge that you would have us to be. Father, we ask you to be with Jenny. We ask you to be with our sister Katie as she fell this past week. We ask you to be with her and her healing. Father, we ask you to be with um, with Ellie. We ask you to be with Dad. We ask you to be with Savannah, Father, we ask you to be with uh, Brother David. And he's been sick for a little while now. We ask you to bless him. We ask you to be with the Brother Mike. Father, we ask you to be with all of those in our circles of influence, family and friends that are not doing well. We ask you to be with them, be with those who are experiencing COVID. We ask you to be with Sarah and her family. And Father, we ask that, that you would continue to bless Mike and his recovery. And especially, Father, right now, we ask you to be with our sister Mary. Be with her. Be with the families they care for. Father, bless us this day with opportunities to do good. In Jesus' name we pray.